Hey guys and welcome back to the Fix It Fingers workshop. Today we're going to be looking at a new tool from Craig. It is the Craig Straight Edge Guide, which I gave a very cheeky preview to in my last video. However, it wasn't set up. That was only one piece of it. And for what is a relatively simple tool, there are actually quite a few bits in the box. So today we're going to go through step by step on how to set this up properly and give you some straight edge action. Let's go. So this is the regular version. It also comes in XL. The difference being that this one will do about 1.2 meters, four feet. The XL will do the full sheet of plywood at 2.4 meters or eight feet. However, assembly is pretty much the same. You just need to repeat a few steps if you get the long one. Let's start putting some of these bits together. These are all the tools that you will need. The hex key is included. The screwdriver and the straight edge are not. Okie dokie, step one is easy but fiddly. Grab your tiny little grub screws and give them a few quick turns in these bars. Don't tighten them all the way through, just give them a quick screw. And repeat for the second one. Grab the track section that has the clamp on it Take the bottom flat bars and insert those and then put one of your top bars about halfway and line them up. Now tighten these down a little bit but not all the way, just enough so that they're not going to fall out. Just until it bites. Grab your second piece of track and make sure that the hole is away from where you are joining it up. Line up two bits of metal. Just make sure you don't pinch your bit of track in there. Should click together nicely. Grab your straight edge. Hold them together. And now you can tighten up just a quarter past snug, really. Bites, little quarter turn, that is enough pressure. If you have the XL version, you can repeat this step now for the additional track sections to give you the full eight feet cut. And then quarter past on the originals. Feel along the joint, make sure that it is nice and flush. Lovely. Flip the whole thing over so the clamp is pointed up. Grab the other clamping block and slide it into the track. Make sure you can do that. Now we're going to install the handle, but before we flip it over, hex key can live on those handy little clips in there. Flip your straight edge guide over, grab the handle, line it up with the two tracks, slide it in, bolt goes through, and give it a few quick turns just to get it started, and tighten it from this side. No need to over tighten it because the nut will be captured in there. Now we're assembling the cut line indicator stops and if you see right in here there is another captured nut scenario. So grab your nut, try to get it in there so that it is in the right orientation so that you can see it through there and then you'll be able to turn on the knurled thumb screw. Again not too tight just so it doesn't fall out. Now the straight edge guide is usable for right-handed and left-handed people and also for left-bladed and right-bladed saws. So this part of the setup you'll have to tailor to your particular circumstance. I've got my saw in my right hand most of the time so I want to cut probably on this side of the guide and my blade is on the left hand side. So handles back here, we're cutting along here. This is where we've got to do the business end of the repeatable cuts 
using these fancy dancy little edge guide things. So the important orientation here is that you have the knurled nuts facing outwards and these bits facing inwards. If we look closely, we can see there is a slightly longer section on these guides and those two long sections need to face in to the middle of your saw. Insert them into each of the tracks. They come out the other side. Can be a little bit firm. And then put the knurled nuts over the edge and tighten those down a little bit. You never have to tighten these too much. Grab your circular saw, make sure it's unplugged or you've got the battery out. Retract around the blade guard and position your saw on a scrap piece of plywood MDF or any other sheet material that you're going to be cutting with this thing. Then make a mark effectively where the straight edge is going to be at this end and repeat at this end. Grab your straight edge slide. Tilt the clamp back and you'll be able to slide it nice and easily. Swing it around and hook it on. Bring your clamps in and position the edge to where your circular saw was. This is a calibration step, we're only going to have to do it once. Once you're about in position, you'll notice that this thing is spring-loaded. Pull on the handle, it will allow you to clamp very securely. And that looks good to me. Grab your saw, retract the blade guard again, line it up, and double check that it's all still in the right spot. That looks good to me. Now we can slide the blade cut indicator to be flush with the edge. Once you're happy that's in line, undo the knurled nut, slide that into position, and tighten it up. That is now calibrated for your saw. When you grab your tool, you'll probably find it's going to be like this. So you can slide that all the way out. It should be nicely lined up, line marked on here. Then you know that's where it is going to cut. Before you make the cut, slide it out of the way a little bit just so you don't nick it or anything like that. And then repeat the process at the other end. We're all calibrated. So now we're calibrated, what exactly can it do and what is it used for? Well, I can either take a small strip off this end by measuring out how thin I want that strip to be and marking it at both edges, or more commonly, I want this thing to be, let's say 970 millimeters. And we take two measurements from the far end and set up our cut with the guides. So first things first, Slide your guides all the way to where they're meant to be. Stopped by your lovely little blocks here. Hook it over in roughly position. Put one hand holding the movable stop block here. Grab the handle, give it a good pull. That'll then grip so your straight edge isn't going anywhere. Now, if these are in the correct position, you can use the guides and tap it over until they're perfectly lined up, remembering which side of the line you want to cut on. Once you're happy that everything is locked in securely, push these out of the way so that you don't hit them with a saw by accident. So obviously the primary intended use for the straight edge guide is with your circular saw that we have just calibrated to and it will give you nice repeatable cuts. However, one of the advantages of this tool is you can also use it for your jigsaw. 
for your router, which is what I think I'll probably use it for most of the time, to cut some lovely dados or grooves. You can even get really creative and use it for drilling a whole line of pilot holes using a quick little jig, and of course for your torch. Once you're done, simply pull the handle to unclip, slide the guides out of the way, lean it up against the wall. I'd like to quickly thank my channel members for supporting the work that I do here at Fix It Fingers. If you'd like to subscribe too, that would be awesome. And sometime in the near future, I will compare this new straight edge guide to its direct counterpart, the Craig AccuCut, to see which one is better in which situation. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.